So Harrison Price from the Historic Wall Center. This next interview brought to you by Mr. Lube and Tires. Change your oil, change your wipers event is on now. Visit MrLube.com, download your coupon for a free pair of Goodyear hybrid wiper blades with any oil change, only for a limited time at Mr. Lube with 18 locations in the lower mainland. And you need those Goodyear hybrid wipers today. Yes. With a I, atmospheric river. I had this thought going. as we welcome Frank Carrado to the show. It was one of those days, you know them in Vancouver, Frank, you were... Mm. I was dry and, and my wipers were not working great. It sort of felt like they were leaving behind a... Mm. a lot so a, little a, little a little residue a little residue yeah Good when, hand when my parents moved here last year i'm like you need a proper rain jacket not what you've been using you need proper rain shoes and you need a good umbrella yeah actually can you answer a question for me before you get going this is mm. regarding the umbrella now my I don't, recollection, I don't use them okay my recollection, though, in Vancouver is that there was just umbrellas everywhere. Mm -hmm. You walk in, there's like a little uh, bin where mm -hmm. there's just umbrellas. Is it like take a penny, leave a penny? Just, or is it? are you responsible for your own umbrella? I wouldn't say it's quite as cavalier as take a penny, leave a penny. Okay. But I have seen it work that way. Like here yeah. at the Wall Center, for example, they'll give you a, a, an umbrella on your way out yeah. the door if you're a guest. But they would like it back. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they would appreciate it back. Right. And yes, there's there's bins yeah. at the front of every restaurant. You know, if you love your umbrella, do not put it in the bin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would keep that close. And that's by. a pretty valuable item for you in Vancouver. The, the debate here, Frank, is whether or not the golf umbrella is appropriate on city streets. I am vehemently against the golf umbrella on city streets. It's just too large. It's just too inconvenient for the rest of us, try, especially the tall people trying to avoid a needle in the eye so if you are going umbrella you know uh, conser conservation collapsible what, small just for yourself or if you happen to have another person with you you know a, a mid-sized golf umbrella you know, for watching soccer and field hockey and uh, golf right exactly yeah. Yeah. you know it rains a lot when you can nitpick about the types of umbrellas <laughs> yeah no it's okay. fair only it's in fair. vancouver does yeah. that actually happen it's so fair. we're basking in the glow of young players playing well over the course of young stars training camp and now one singular preseason game here um people are letting their imagination run wild here about jonathan lecker maybe making this team, forcing his way onto this team. Um, and it made me think of a young player who seemingly did everything right during his preseason um, in a position of need, right shot defenseman, um, to the point where we were on the postgame show going, he's just made the team. He has. He's made the team. Here's the head coach, John Tortorella. We've sent Frankie Corrado down. I don't think he, he even got asked a question before he said that. He just wanted to say it. <laughs> I think he just and I so it's it's hilarious thinking back on that. You will, like we'll get to Lake Karamaki for sure, but it's hilarious thinking back to that because I literally went from off the ice, headset on, post game interview on the Team 1040 with you with Blake Price with Blake. Um, Blake saying, you know, we did the interview, Blake, I think you did everything you could. Like, you know, it sounds like you, you probably made the team, something like that yeah. to tap on the shoulder. Can you go see torts quickly? Sit down in the chair. As soon as I sat down, we're sending you to Utica. It all within the span of three and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, different times, different scenario yes. for the team, certainly. Uh, yeah. Weird state of build, build slash not, not rebuild there. Um, it's a different scenario for Lekramaki. So let's assume he's, he continues the mastery that he's shown here. Mastery, lowercase. Yeah. Um, do, I mean, is there any predicting whether or not he could actually make this team, given they are flush with wingers right now? I do think it would have to be... Like the, the effort and the production would have to be so far above and beyond what I think management and the brass would have expected for him coming in. Like he would really have to blow everyone away to, to I think, just say, you know, we're not even going to bother with Abbotsford. We're going to have him here and, and he's going to be here. Like I, I, you know, the SHL is a it, it's a really good league in Europe. Um, it's it's done a great job of developing players. 
there is something to be said, though, for learning the North American game at the American Hockey League level. It just takes away some of the pressures in, in certain situations. Um, gives you a little more comfort, I think, for a guy like that to to kind of get his feet wet. But I, I just think for, for him to be starting night one or for them to, to tell him, you're going to be here, you're on this team, his performance is going to have to blow everyone away to the point where it's just like, we had no choice. We had to keep him. I think that's it's going to be difficult for him to to do that because it is crowded and there is something to be said for just go over there, learn, play. This will be here for you as long as you hold up your end of the bargain. Um, there's no rush to getting a guy like that here. It's exciting to think about, but I think when we kind of look at it practically, um, it, it makes more sense for him to be starting in Abbotsford. What are the differences for a winger playing in the SHL and on the North American ice? Well, it's usually on the wall, like on the boards, just getting getting pucks out, I find is the biggest thing for young wingers. And then, you know, for for the Swedes, because they're playing on the bigger size ice, there's, uh, you know, you have a little more time on the outside of the ice. The other thing I think in, you know, on the offensive side of the puck, um, you know, you can hang out on the outside of the, the ice a little bit more. Not saying he does that, because if you watch his gameplay, like he's, very willing to carry the puck through the middle and, and get to areas where he can shoot it. But it's just like everything really filters to the middle quickly here. And there's no time. Uh, there's just no time. And you're under duress a little bit more. So I think learning about that here um, on, on the smaller size ice would, would make a difference for him. Ratu. Atu? Pocket has been raving Is about it Ratu. Or Atu? Atu. 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 Atu Ratu. Yes. Whew. What a game. I mean, they need a center. If he's a right shot, I'm doubly intrigued. Yeah. Because they need a right shot center. But to go that, to be that strong in the, the circle, and he was distributing the puck pretty well also. I mean, again, I don't see a spot for him, but. See, I don't see a spot for him either. But I thought watching him last night, I'm like, if he plays like that and then some and keeps it up, like, there's definitely not a spot available, but could they, like, could he force their hand a little bit? He looked to me like, you know, when you watch some guys and you're like, especially during the preseason, you think that guy's an AHL player. Just mm -hmm. like the way, the way he skates, the way he looks, the way he carries himself. You could just tell if you put an NHL player next to an AHL player in preseason, you can kind of figure it out. From watching him, I'm like, that guy looks like an NHL player. I hear you. Night. Yeah, I that's just, a good way of just, putting it. Yeah. Just like the, the aesthetic of him. Like, he looks bigger than than the last time He's I big. saw him playing in an NHL game. I think his his hands dexterity uh, was really good. Like, I thought he handled the puck extremely well. I thought on the power play, um, he had a ton of command on the power play on the half wall position where he was attacking, you know, towards the net. And he knew exactly what he wanted to do if he was going to make the pass down low or if he was going to take a shot. And like I just, I thought there was there was a lot of a, a lot of conviction to his game, and it's just one of those. It's like a feel thing where it's like some guys look like AHL players, and you can sniff it out. That guy looked like an NHL player to me. Now it's the first game of the preseason. He, he's still like he's going to have to elevate, you know, as game one, game two, game three for his own sake. But I think that's a great start for him that's as good of a start as you can get um as far as making a good impression in camp he's two years older than lecromaki so to compare sort of you know should he make the team should he over ripen he played a dozen games in the nhl two years ago yeah so you know like he has had his um extra little bit of ripening in the oven if you will of the ahl i mean if you're going to give anybody sort of a a, a week start you know a, a week's worth of games just to see, you know, in the regular season, maybe he is the guy. I don't, I don't know. Again, they don't well, need him, but. They don't, but isn't it like, don't you want to see what a guy like that can turn into? Right? Like when, when, when Vegas won their, their cup, everyone started talking about the big, long rangy centerman that they had, you know, Eichel Stevenson, um, you know, go lower William Carlson. And I'm watching him and I'm like, okay, he's big. He looks big. He comes up with a lot of pucks. Um, he's got good hands. Like he's making good plays. 
like my my wheel started turning. I'm like, oh, maybe they have something here. Well, like, and, and you don't know unless you get him in. And, and a couple of things here uh, via context. He's competing with Nils Oman and Pew Suter and, Pew Suter and Teddy Bluger. Yeah. That is an easier route, You're I right. think, to a gig than what the winger, Lekramaki, is You're right. uh, competing against. He's three inches taller and 20 pounds heavier than Lekramaki. And lest we forget, when this kid was 16, 17 years old, there was talk about him being the first overall pick in his draft class and he faded from there and he went in the second round, but the pedigree here is super high. It is not dissimilar to Lekramaki who wound up going in the middle of the first round. So if you're just telling me that this is a kid who had all the tools and all the hallmarks of an NHL player and just had a couple of bad years in his late teens before he bloomed. Well, I mean, that's a reasonable narrative. Mm -hmm as to what has prevented him from being a higher pick in an NHL player already, but what might still make him that here in shorter order than we might have first expected. Yeah, like I, I think you, you can never go wrong with a guy like Lech Karamaki by just saying, go learn, go play, get your reps. He's going to get, you know, if he goes to Abbotsford, he's going to be on the first power play unit. He's going to feel good about his game, hopefully, because he's scoring and he's doing all that stuff like Ratu's kind of done that and he's had the taste of the NHL in short spurts and um you know he's he's basically at the point where like this is when you make the jump and from what I watched from that guy last night I saw a player that's ready to make the jump now he could go out in game two and be not very noticeable and we're right back to square one thinking he's just you know a guy in an in an organization but I, I would imagine like if the coaches and the management are watching that back they can't wait to get this guy in another game because they want to see him, you know, continue to progress. And um, the the progression for him might be right on schedule. Like this, ju this just might be when he's ready to make the jump where like Karamaki is, you know, he's kind of just starting that journey. Our first opportunity to talk to you since Thatcher Demko uh, detailed his injury and the signing of Kevin Lankinen. Uh, what did you make of the happenings in the Canucks crease? Okay, so if we start with Demko, I thought it was smart of Demko to come out and talk about it himself. There can be things when it comes to injuries that get lost in translation, whether you have a coach talking about it or, you know, they're not really going to make the medical staff talk about it. I don't remember ever seeing that. I do remember seeing, you know, maybe there's like a letter from a doctor just kind of outlining what the player might deal with. But I, I think it's important for the fans to hear what's going on with Demko, how he feels from his own, his own point of view and his own words. Um, so good that he did that. Um, not so good is the fact that it's an injury that we haven't seen before in the game of hockey. And the thing that scares me is that there's just no playbook for that. You know, like I, I think we've talked about this, where all these injuries, you know what it looks like from start to fun, start to finish. That one you don't know. So it's a lot of, it's just a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of test runs. There's a possibility for some setbacks. So like that, that would scare me the most. Um, and in the meantime, you bring in Kevin Lankin in on a very team friendly deal under a million dollars. And by the way, Shelovs looked good last night. I thought. I thought he had a really good game. So there's another thing that's encouraging because you're going to need that guy to, you know, to pick up some slack and um, hopefully Kevin Lankin and can also, um, you know, just play good enough that he doesn't lose you games and gives your team a chance to win games. I think that's all you're asking for um, from Shelovs and Lankin in before Demko is fully ready and healthy. But um, yeah, it's just, it, there's, there's so much uncertainty, I, I guess, as far as what the, what the roadmap looks like and when he's back. And I guess more importantly is when he stays back, because I think that's, that's the biggest thing where, you know, you could get yourself to a point where you're feeling okay, get in a game or two, but all of a sudden you can't recover between days or you do a long, you know, you do that Eastern road swing, one of those, which are, you know, feels like there's two or three every year where you do seven games and 14 nights out East. And it's like, you do that. And now you're back on the shelf again. Like that's, you know, it's it's about getting back. It's more about staying back for Demko. And I think we're still we're still a ways away from seeing exactly what that looks like. Remind me, did you play with your knee injury 
late in your career? Like, did you try to use that as yeah. sort of a pain management thing? Like, what's that like to know that you go it's out hard. there, you've got something, and it's just going to flare up every now and then? You, you got to come. Do, do you protect it? Do you play differently because of it? You know, you're not going to play differently because of it, but you almost think differently because you're almost, you're on like high alert. You're always kind of aware of it. Like you're checking in with yourself. How do I feel today? Is it bothering me? You know, mm. where, whereas if you're just a, you know, a normal player who's not dealing with that type of ailment, you just show up to the rink, you do your thing and you go out there and play. But now it's like, okay, I'm thinking, okay, what do I feel today? Is that different than yesterday? Or, um, you know, have I felt this before? And, and that's tough because then the more you look for stuff, the more you find stuff it's totally and true. that's the trick like that that's the trick so you know finding that balance between checking in with yourself as far as how you feel but not you know almost making something up in your head is, is going to be tough but yeah like my my knee was such a mess by the end of things you know i had the acl I had a torn quadriceps tendon that developed this really nasty uh tendinosis that um, I had to be in a hyperbaric chamber like 80 times in order to clear that out. And, um, you know, and then it was ultimately my hip and some nerve damage that did me in. But the whole time, you know, I'm, I'm every day I'm like, okay, how does my knee feel today? How does my quad feel today? How does my nip, hip feel today? Like it's, it's tough. It, it's, it's very mentally draining to deal with that. Uh, Lankinen. Any notes? I listen, I, I just think he's, he played well last year. Um, I, I think especially when um, Soros was not struggling, but wasn't playing to the the level that Soros usually does. Um, I, I thought Lankinen, you know, bridged that gap, filled that void for them. So uh, ultimately, all he needs to be here is a goalie that gives you a chance to win. Like, I, I remember when we were doing free agent frenzy talking to like Biron and noodles about some of the goalies that were going to be signing. Like he's kind of in that same category of all these guys where it's like, you know, there was Kakinen, there was Lankinen. you know, if you go back to when Varlamov signed his deal with the Islanders, like they're just, you know, he's probably worth more than what the Canucks got him for. So they, they, they're going to find some value there as far as what the, what the deal is, but he's just, all he's got to do is give the team a chance to win. And I think, you know, if you look at his time in Nashville last year, he did that on, on, you know, many, many occasions. All right, buddy. Well, you stay dry there in Toronto as we'll attempt to here in Vancouver. It is raining. It's, mm -hmm. it's raining today. I was supposed to golf. Now I'm not golfing. I, uh, I, get, I guess you guys, it rains so much that if it's just a rainy day, like you'll still get out there. So, yeah. No. Frank, you know how you play through that knee injury? Yeah. I play through rain, okay? Yeah. I play through the wet. I play through the muck. Not really. He does. Sometimes you have to pick the ball cleanly because if you put that club in the <laughs> ground, it's disappearing. Played on Monday. Blake's like, oh, you're going out. It's been raining all morning. No, no. no. That's why some me. people get I'm aces. Not I push some through. people exactly. don't get aces. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Okay. Wow. Beautiful way to end this okay. interview, Frank Corrado. Thank you for your support, and we'll catch up next week. See ya.